basically just taking a look at the recent rapid game that we played, playing as white, and just taking a break, a look at the breakdown. Um, I felt that there was some sections where maybe I probably overworked myself or I missed certain attack potential because I tunneled my vision. So it's always a little bit sketchy when I feel like I'm tunneling my vision. Uh, I need to kind of practice to oh, spread the vision a little bit. But it's really difficult when you're in the game and the time is running down as well. But I just want to take a look at the game just to break it down for myself. So we came through with our normal opening attack through the centre and captured with the Knights. And they brought their Queen all the way down. I thought there must be something here because... The queen is really far down. I know it's attacking the pawn, but surely that's easily defendable. Does the queen not get trapped in this position? So I'm thinking that during the game. So I bring the queen up. I'm thinking, do I bring the queen up or is my queen going to get trapped? Or do I lose some sort of tempo in terms of defending this pawn? I'm also defending the knight. So it's kind of overworking the piece. But we went for that. And then we brought the bishop through supporting the knight. So that's feeling fairly okay. But I'm feeling there's a lot of pressure being put on this pawn. You know, they're starting to target. Then I'm thinking they're probably going to go on castle. Going to get the rook into the game. Going to be hitting this pawn with all sorts of stuff. But um, we felt fairly comfortable. Just really wanted to be aware from their queen. And any thoughts of any potential doubling attack type things with the knights or anything like that. So basically, giving the king some company. That was the whole ethos behind it. So the knight comes through and attacks the queen. So we move the queen back because obviously we're thinking, oh, we're going to lose this pawn if they actually take the, with the knight, etc. But I did think that there was going to be a better position for us if they did. So they developed their bishop. They obviously saw... But still, it would have been a little bit of an advantage for them. But I don't think positionally it would have suited them. So now we're going for the small piece attacking the the queen. Thinking, well, surely we can trap this queen maybe. But they go for the exchange. So we just take off now. So the knight is on the edge. And with the position of these pawns and position of our pieces, we could potentially trap the knight. And in my head, I had that in the early part of this game, round about here, where, oh, potentially it could trap the knight. So we go and attack a higher piece with a lesser piece, which is the pawn, just seeing what this knight is wanting to do. I'm thinking it's probably going to come and attack the bishop. If it does, then we can bring our bishop back because we still want to keep protecting this knight. And they do actually bring the knight down, so we bring the bishop back. So at this moment in time, playing fairly decent defensive counter-attacking type manoeuvres, more defensive at this moment in time because black is really pushing it and they're really being aggressive. So at least we have the knowledge of being able to defend whilst finding counter-attacking positions rather than over-egging. So we see the two knights lined up together. The bishop is actually protecting, could look to potentially start pushing this here. And in my head, I'm thinking this, this knight could get trapped. So bear that in mind, I'm thinking that throughout this game up until this point of this knight potentially getting trapped. So they move the knight out of the way. So we hit this knight. So now I'm thinking, okay, one of these knights should be getting potentially trapped. Maybe not this one, but maybe this one now. If we can trap it and get it blocked in somehow, then we can win a knight with a smaller piece. Or just blockade it, because at the minute it can't move there, it can't move here, it can't move here. So that's where my thought process for thinking about trapping the knight ended. I then went on to the other side of the board and then I started attacking the bishop. So they took the bishop off the board, we took with our rook. And obviously because this pawn is being attacked by this one, we couldn't take with this one. So now the rook's putting two pressure onto the pawn. As we said, this pawn was always going to be attacked. So we bring the bishop up, supporting. So we're playing absolute total defensive game here. Defense, counter-attack, defense, but not really pushing any forward, pushing forward with any major attacks. 
So basically we're just covering off the blind spots, the potential attacks that the opponent uh, can put to us. And yet again, they put more pressure onto the pawn. So at this point in time, there's no thoughts of trapping the knight that's gone out of the window. It was a good thought. Um, but now we're having to deal with defending this pawn in the centre. Thankfully, they started pushing the pawn down on the far side. I thought, what's this all about? So we could go and attack the knight. So we're starting a mini attack process, giving them something to think about. So we can push onto the knight with the pawn and they grab. So then we're looking to exchange. I was going to take with the pawn, but I thought, no, let's get these rooks off the board if we can. See if we can manage um, our space um, better than the opponent with our pieces. So we capture pawns on the knight. And so the knight is moving. So now my thought process is totally away from trapping this knight. My thought process is on looking at what the opponent is attempting to do. So we push our pawn up, looking to basically stop this bishop from attacking the pawn. So our rook can actually have free reign to come and either protect or attack. And thankfully, again, they start pushing this pawn. I'm thinking, okay, this is good. They may be losing tempo in terms of shuffling their pieces to get a better position on the board. So now we're looking to line up our knight to attack the bishop, maybe attack this pawn as well. And they do push the pawn down, but the pawn doesn't have any support, so we can actually take the pawn. So for a moment, we feel like we've got a bit of an advantage, positionally as well, but we're not wanting to over-egg anything. So the bishop moves and protects the pawn. So we can take the bishop off the board. And now we're attacking the knight, x ray through to the pawn. And they continue pushing the pawn. So I'm thinking at this point, we can take the knight off the board. This was where really we could have done a lovely move. We could have done a lovely move, pushing the pawn onto the knight here, because where is the knight going? It can't go here. If it goes here, it gets taken. If it goes here, it gets taken. So that tunnel vision that I mentioned right at the very beginning, um, so focused on thinking about this pawn, thinking about taking this knight off, when really just taking a little bit of a moment, I could have just got a knight off the board for free. So that's that's the that's the killer point during this game, really, of having a focal point on a potential target so early on in the game and then just totally forgetting about it in the later part of the game. But it's okay, we grabbed the knight, they grabbed. So now at this point in time, um, we're looking fairly okay in terms of we've got one, two, three, four, five, five pawns. They've got one, two, three, four. They've got a split pawn in the centre. We've got a split pawn in the centre. Um, so it's a matter of managing the pawns. We've got past pawn, well, semi-past pawn, and we've got a past pawn here, semi-past here. So that's a lot for the opponent to be thinking about. They're going to have to readjust their knight in order to find a better position on the board. So we look to attack the pawn, keeping it nice and simple. And this should be easily converted from this point on, just putting the checks on. But what I'm having to do is I'm, I'm overworking because I didn't get that knight off the board early on. So these little tiny things do kind of bug me because um, throughout the history of my games, I've always found that, man, I work really hard in my chess games. And then when I do evaluation, I find that, could have been a little bit simpler if I'd just taken a little bit more time, not focus so much on one particular area, just scan the, the whole board before making a move. And the rest to me seems pretty straightforward here. So they captured, we captured, and the rook's coming down. Now we can save the pawn. And like I said, it should be easily converted and the opponent resigned at this point. <laughs> 